that's that's why I have the biggest challenge, especially since I have a lot of dark outlines on top of a, a white canvas, basically. It's pretty obvious when it's missing. There's really no magic solution to keep the makeup from not rubbing away or melting off. It, it will, and it does. Every Broadway picture that you've seen, or you know, show, you think that Shrek makeup, it, it, it's gonna look awful by the end of the show. And they keep touching it up, and it, it gets all over the costume, there's nothing you can really do about it. Uh, you know, I think things like latex appliances can definitely help. Yeah, actually, some fan I've seen have, uh, like, put actual objects on them. I, I really liked uh, some fan that I've seen that have done rivets. So they take, like, maybe scrapbooking buttons or something, like, and put them on their face, and they're, like, light enough that they can, like, use medical adhesive or, or spirit gum to put those on. And I think that's something that's really cool, because having three-dimensional stuff on your face. And if your makeup starts melting, it still looks like a three-dimensional thing on your face. And, you know, anytime you can, you don't have to paint something, and it will retain its color, it's always good too, so. Uh, you can get creative with it, I don't know. We'll, we'll, I've always wanted to do facial appliances because with the invention of HD, uh, our makeup is going to look worse and worse. <laughs> so, if it was financially possible, like a very light, like three-dimensional thing, I thought that would be so cool just to, you know, but that's, we're not at that level with this. I don't think I've ever really experienced my makeup coming off before I wanted it to. Um, it's, I mean, again, I have the, the, the luckily I've been, I'm on the coattails of your guys, is what you, your experience, but I kind of, I had my costume brought out to the collars away from my neck, and uh, the only thing that, that goes is my eyelids, but um, I mean, it's all a matter of like, I've never done, uh, we have done like long days with makeup, uh, but even then I'm just, I don't know, I'm just super careful about it, and it's kind of, we, also, take we also sweat differently. Too. You're a best yeah. trick. I sweat everywhere but my face. Yeah, and and we sweat, sweat like stuff. almost exclusively like on our back and our faces, so yeah. but that's also something to take into consideration. You only know that after like doing a show or like yeah. walking around a convention for a while, you're like, I'm constantly dripping from my, the top of my head where my hair is and stuff. Where are you dripping from? <laughs> 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 Without any sort of protection, what happened? All the sweat pooled into the center right here, dropped out right on my microphone, and just destroyed it. Yeah. Oh, wow! Like so now I'm forced to have to wear a sweatband, and it doesn't look as great. But we can't destroy our equipment like that. It's, it's an expensive act. Yeah, so whatever. You know, if I have to wear something like that, it's actually more comfortable. You know, sweat in your eyes. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah you gotta. It's, yeah, it's, it was really hard. Wow. Actually, you know, I mean, <laughs> the, story, the next day when I have to meet with all the fans and I smell like a bum, that's where all my sweat's going. You know, my costume where it is. Your costume pretty disgusting after the show. Mine is too, but wow. Thank you. So everything that touches my body is like a shirt that I can like uh, carry multiple pants or shirts for a convention. And my vest, you know, is the only thing that I have to let dry. And I'm grateful that I can change everything. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know. So, so you're recently, the one to have to hug me. <laughs> recently, you, uh, uh, you, you're doing some costume modification. You're talking about the last one. So a lot of that's with movement restriction, right? Yeah. Movement restriction and with the, the, the odor restriction, too. <laughs> it, gets, it gets pretty uncomfortable in these costumes. But yeah, movement, res movement restriction. Like, my jacket is just too many layers, and that's just like... I mean, I've gotten used to it, but uh, yeah, it's like... Hey everyone, uh, clap your hands above your heads. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't because my jacket's too thick. So well, getting there's too thick. there's definitely different challenges for being a robot. And if you're gonna walk around a convention, you're gonna know what you're you know the first time you do it with some restricting costume, you're probably gonna notice what you don't like about it, and then you're gonna want to change it because it. I mean, if you're out there for a whole day, you're, you're gonna notice that oh my shoes are too tight, the pants are yeah. not fitting right, the, the jacket's restricting or. You know, there's, I always hear, I get, I mean, if I'm sweating and stuff, sometimes I'll get, you know, friction rashes on weird places like armpits and like neck and stuff, and it's, it's gross, but I mean, when you're sweating and, that, and, you're, and the skin's moving against your costume, it's something you don't really think about. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot that could happen, and I'm sure uh, as many people cosplay, you, you probably have a lot of weird uh, battle scars from costume. <laughs> I mean, anyone who's worn a corset. Probably has. That's, that's what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who needs to wear a cork you, you should find where you can get away with being comfortable. Um,
there's a reason, you know, uh, why Michael Reed never wanted to be a robot. It's because the same person who put themselves into discomfort. I remember John from taking off his wall. The zoo is the night, uh, I can't, 72 days in a row putting on makeup. 74 days. 74 days. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, that's, a, that's a hellish nightmare that I don't want to live through. His, he, John started losing, like he had a gaping yeah. hole, and oh, it, it wouldn't heal because, you know, he, just, he was, I guess he was scrubbing the makeup off every night, and he had to wear a band aid with the makeup on the top of the band aid. So. I'm glad. Oh. I, mean, I don't know what happened. Yeah, that's a yeah. We, we performed at the San Diego Zoo uh, for two years straight. Uh, just the summers, two and a half months every year, seven days a week, four shows a day, and we had to make fun. Eventually, we, I mean, that's not the hardest part. Like, eventually, just get into the routine. Like, this is my hell now. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get used to it, whatever. It's I don't know how you just get to this thing because I, I was I, by the end of it, I was like. There was something like entirely rusted and stuff. Oh yeah, like so, like your makeup uh, from the start of the zoo to the end, like rabbit's face basically just oxidized completely. <laughs> so you really get so bored. It's so boring. So by the last show, you came out with uh, a torch and a book in your. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was. It was. I would not trade the experience, but it was really. It's not even that physically exhausting, honestly. I mean, we, we, it wasn't a whole bunch of exercise because you're you're. You get there half day, you put on the makeup, and then you wait and do like 20 minute bursts, and then you go home. It's like it's just a giant waiting around. It was, it was just a, a very compact extremes of ups and lows. Like, yay, we get to play for people and perform every day. Uh, yay, we get to make a good amount of money, and oh, we have to find wait an hour to find parking for someone to leave the zoo every morning, and we have to drive and yeah. all these do with all that stuff. Well, these are real. <laughs> But but hopefully when if you're doing the robot stuff you're gonna find the things that you can kind of slack off on to have more comfort. I mean I mean you're not always probably gonna be in character, but you know the minute someone comes up with video or wants to take a photo, it's it's always fun to get the robot character. And be like wait, this is a still photo. Why are you doing the robot? It's like because you're trying to That's show awesome. everyone around you like hey look a robot, and everyone's like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Which is our first experience when we went to Bellevue Park. We didn't even have time to put there up our instruments before people were like, "Oh, it's having photos." Because you know, I, maybe that's kind of when you're a street performer, people are expecting if you're a robot on the street, that's that's not a prime opportunity to take a picture. So conventions, everyone would anticipate it anyway. So it's prime game for for looking. At and I think doing the robot is, is important because you know you might not be walking around as a robot. As soon as you get that picture, you snap it in. And you're like, yeah, showing your stuff, and people are like, whoa, you're actually doing the robot, and you look like a robot. And then you know, you're really happy, so, so, you know, a little bit of pantomime. You don't need to do it extensively like we do, but, you know, find your strengths. Uh, we look in mirrors constantly. Every time I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, pop and block, and, you know, just to, to, get, to build it into my mind's eye, you know, get that muscle memory going. It's, it's, it's kind of, you know, there's, uh, it, it's kind of weird to think about, but, you know, some people have an issue knowing when they're 